Group includes the services company uh, Brightcloud. We focused over the years on building a portfolio of uh, products which we believe add value to most organizations application delivery. We've wrapped these up with a range of different services because we recognized very early on that our customers want to get value, a value return on the products that they buy, and really understanding how to use them, implement them, and getting a very good source of support has been essential uh, to getting that value. And finally, we have a whole range of cloud-based services or managed services based out of five different data centers in the UK. And for those of you that are in the NHS and have joined us, well, we are connected to N3 and we offer these services back to the NHS as well. These include a range of things including online and flexible, online backup and flexible hosting. The company was established in 1999, we've been doing this a long time and indeed we were talking about this this morning um, with Citrix, we first started to deploy applications in 1996 from our previous business. Brightcloud, the services company, was started in 2000. The mainstream products that we are focused on include Citrix, VMware, um, HP and Cisco and these are the technologies that are core to the way that we build our cloud infrastructure. But where we unique is we also provide a range of truly expert products that add value that many of you may not be familiar with. So things to improve the performance of applications across wide area networks, monitor that performance um, and enhance it and produce decent reporting. This is all core to the way that we deliver our managed service, core to the way that we help our customers. Again, all wrapped up with enabling services and a range of managed services including support. And I think it was really from our support team uh, quite a while ago that we first started to look at the, the issues of dealing with BYOD. Many of our customers were bringing own devices, iPads were starting to crop up, usually on managing directors' desks. But then with the advent of or, or the introduction of Windows 8 and uh, our beta uh, trials of that, we realized that tablet computing and uh, the consumerization of IT as it's called is here. And so, uh, our support team and indeed the way that we deliver applications from our cloud started to come together to realize that actually we already had what was a very good solution to bring your own device. Obviously you see a couple of other services there that we also provide. Um, the credentials that we have are high levels of expertise with Citrix, VMware, Microsoft and indeed with Bluecoat which is one of the technologies we're going to talk about later on. We've just been uh, awarded the value added partner of the year for this year which is um, due to our work accelerating applications over wide area networks. So before we talk about BYOD, let's just have a think about what the problems are because customers that we speak to do fall into either a yes or no camp. Uh, there's very few that say maybe. Um, actually there are very few that say no, but there are a few organizations that definitely do not want to go ahead with BYOD. The reason, I think, is because they see this as um, uh, a lot of problems, an awful lot of questions to ask. Uh, it goes against the general feeling that uh, to standardize the build at the desktop leads to the cost reduction. How can you do that when you've got a BYOD um, uh, initiative? People believe that BYOD is hard to administer and hard to secure. And most people, in fact, when we look at the statistics, there's a lot of people scared about data leakage and malware. Um, IT organizations are concerned about what they see as a variable and increasing load of support for these devices. Um, and also, controlling the acceptable use of these devices is, is an, another concern. Uh, BYOD devices will introduce risks. Uh, I think nobody argues with that. And vulnerabilities. Uh, and it becomes complex to draw the line between what is the responsibility of the internal IT, the enterprise, what is the responsibility of the users. Effectively what we find is we have a long list of concerns and questions, all, all formed from the need for BYOD policy. And IT feels pulled in opposite directions. We, we know we want to standardize, we know we want to make it easy to support a volume of users but also we know that those users want different devices. We know that we have a range of different applications. We're keen to get applications into the cloud, but we 
we also have legacy applications we want to deploy. So we're pulled in different directions and we find ourselves with a long list of concerns and questions. So let's have a look at what is BYOD and the benefits. Uh, to us, I think, BYOD runs the risk of becoming overcomplicated. It is effectively what it says. It is allowing people to use their own device. And I know that that is very obvious, but from that spins out a whole range of different questions. Which device are we allowing them to use? Is it a specified device, or are we going to allow every device that anybody wants to bring in to be used? How is it paid for? Are we contributing to that device, or is it simply that we want to let people use the device that they've already bought? Who is responsible for the support? And as a managed services company with a, a large support team, we obviously don't want to be supporting uh, any number of different devices. And also, we have to ask ourselves, who in the organization are we going to allow to benefit? At the moment, senior managers seem to be bringing in their own devices. But are we going to restrict that to the chosen few? Or do we want everybody, every device, anywhere? So the truth is, there is no single answer. And actually, there is really no wrong answer either, unless, of course, it takes to security. What we need and what organizations need is a BYOD policy, which effectively forms from a list of questions similar to those above. Um, and when you've got the answers that are right for your organization, you're, you're on your way. You've got one of the four things you need to achieve BYOD. Uh, to help with this, we provided um, some guidance in the list of questions and some ideas, which is in a free policy guide, which will be available to download very soon. Effectively, what BYOD means is uh, it's a productivity initiative uh, that benefits the organization. But the driver of this initiative is coming from the workforce. It needs to be governed by a policy that's sensible for the users, the workforce, the organization. But most crucially, and this is really what today's seminar is about, it needs to be enabled by technology. What isn't BYOD? Well, it's not going away, and we mustn't confuse it with the technology. For some people that I speak to, BYOD simply means mobile device management. And we're not really sure that that is the right answer. And there's a, a growth in mobile device management organizations, uh, different um, terminologies, mobile application management, for example. What, what and how are they going to deliver solutions? And actually, in the mobile device management arena, you see a range of different organizations all vying for supremacy, supremacy in that market. And really, I think the mobile device management market is already on its way out. Certainly, a lot of enterprises have acknowledged that they've adopted something. Equally, there are many enterprises that don't realize they already have it. Uh, a fallacy, I think, as well, is it doesn't always save money. It can do, but I don't think, and from our research, it isn't always the main driver. Most importantly, what we see is that it isn't the device that is important. It's the application and the data and delivering that application and support data to the user. Ultimately, the device is of very small value compared to the data and the security of that data. And I think what we've found with our customers is that it does not have to be complicated. Effectively, what we can do is tell Sergey, our nurse out there, to bring in his own laptop or his own Mac, whatever he wants to use. So why BYOD? It's being driven by the consumerization of IT, which really means users, modern users, generation Y users, bringing in uh, the gadget or the tablet, the device that they want to use, the phone that they want to use to do their job more productively. It's being driven heavily by the I phenomenon. So in fact, today when we uh, do our demonstration, we'll be using three different uh, Apple devices. Some of these people are coming to work and wanting to use their own device because the device they have at home is better than the one they have to use in the workplace. But certainly, what we find we've got now are multiple devices and multiple influences driving what they want to use to reach and use the applications that they need. This is improving productivity for the enterprise. Uh, it's producing a need for device management. It can save money in the cost of procurement. And when we see workforces merging and changing when companies acquire 
or when companies enter into partnerships with each other. That provides another excellent driver for BYOD. So consumer capability, to a certain extent, is, is outstripping what they are provided with in the enterprise. And this change is here to stay. It's going to be here for a long time, and it's predicted to drive more change in IT over the next 10 years than any other trend. The survey that we uh, recently got hold of from the US shows that the majority of people clearly are using more than one device. Whether that's their family PC, a laptop, or smartphone. And also, the majority of people are working outside and away from the office between one and two days a week. And other drivers for BYOD. And so it's not surprising that 94% of organizations say they're going to have a BYO policy by the middle of this year. And that most of them agree that the crucial driver for BYOD is productivity. It's certainly an attractive employment feature, and it certainly helps uh, your users, your workforce happy. It doesn't necessarily reduce support costs, but it can. But it provides the business with mobility and agility. And what we see is very interesting, and another driver and another reason to want to adopt it, is the development in mobile applications. Mobile applications being developed for mobile devices, but also more and more applications are now available uh, through the cloud or as software as a service. The main benefits, again, interestingly, it's not to do with saving costs, but to do with user satisfaction, mobility, flexibility, and improving productivity. So today, if we look at it, we see that the IT department is generally the center of a managed infrastructure, providing applications and data which is tied to those applications. Uh, we provide that through standardized devices, and we provide that to uh, the people who are the users of the technology we provide. This will change, we believe, with an enlightened IT view where people are placed at the center of the IT for the, uh, the organization, and where they are able to pick from a range of applications that they are able to choose from to do their job. The data is available as needed. It will be independent of the application, and they are given the ability to choose the device that they need, or, or better yet, the devices that they need, depending on the task and the location that they're working in. Most, most organizations' concerns and questions are around security. 85% have said they're worried about security, 81% .80 data leakage and protecting that data. Uh, there's a lot of concern, quite rightly, over the impact of malware, which, uh, as one of our slides shows later, is growing exponentially. <laughs> so, what, so what we find is we need that uh, we need that policy. Uh, we need to be able to ex uh, respect the rights and privacy of the user, but we also need to be able to uh, enforce, to a certain extent, what is acceptable use. Because at the end of the day, we are protecting that user and we're protecting that device while it is on our network. And even when it's off the network, we still want to protect it when it rejoins our network. Uh, we're worried a little bit about whether that device is lost and stolen. We're worried about where the device comes from to a certain extent. So the policy should, for example, prohibit jailbreak devices and enforce some policy protection. The malware protection should also be seen by users as a user benefit rather than something that intrudes on their privacy. So the three technologies that we're going to look at now as we move towards uh, the demo, um, Citrix. Any application from any device, well, that's not really something new for Citrix. We've been doing that since 1996. But securing application data on the device and allowing people access from any device anywhere at any time without the need to manage that device is a crucial cornerstone of what Citrix are bringing to the BYOD solution. I think it's important that we take a look at some other technologies as well. So Blue Code uh, provides effectively protection for that user, protecting them from malware 
and other unauthorized applications and attacks that they might um, suffer from on their own device. And net clarity, this is a very interesting new technology for us um, and proving to be very popular because it provides internal network access control, which is effectively BYOD agnostic. It allows you to defend the inside of your network um, from unauthorized devices and from attack, whether you're pro BYOD or not. A uh, very useful tool when it comes to implementing and controlling your BYOD policy. So very quickly, we'll have a quick look at uh, the Blue Coat offering. Blue Coat, if you're unaware of it, has led the world's secure proxy market for, for some time. This really provides um, organizations with on-premise web defense, defending against malware, botnets, and the like. Um, what's good about this is that all those devices are updated to a service called WebPulse. And this has allowed Blue Coat to launch a cloud-based defensive um, solution, uh, which they call FlexPulse. They've identified, uh, and other people indeed have identified, there is a high risk to the organization through the behavior of mobile users, simply because when they're outside of the network, particularly on their own device, they're free to do what they need. And there are 75 million users of web posts, and these users and their behavior all contribute to the intelligence that Blue Coat has been gathering. Uh, Blue Coat, I believe, was the original company to find uh, what is called the Malnet, which refers to the malware network, the nodes that are delivering malware across the internet. And this monitoring of the Malnet allows them to provide uh, a negative day defense against these threats and these attacks. Um, we do have a little white paper on this, which is produced by Blue Coat, that you'll be able to download. Um, and indeed, we've actually got a seminar in London on the 25th of February. But if you need further um, uh, demonstration of Blue Coat technology, we're happy to arrange that for you at any time. Just talking about the zero day protection that um, Blue Coat are able to provide, this is a real life uh, and I think fairly good example from last year. Effectively, what Blue Coat spotted was that a new site appeared. Um, attached to what they refer to as the Malnet. WebPulse saw that and identified it as a source or potential source of malware and it began blocking it. This was in January. In April we saw the command and control center go live and the, the attacks started in August. So this, this is a very planned attack, carefully constructed and carefully built over a period of time. But WebPulse, as I say, spotted it in January. Once the attack happened, WebPulse had already been blocking that 225 days before the attack. So it's that level of protection that I think makes Blue Coat unique and why we like it as uh, an addition, not just to BYOD, obviously, but to anybody's security policy. A little bit on Net Clarity now. Net Clarity is a relatively new organization, but they provide uh, network access control that is truly agentless. The driver for this is they recognize that most successful exploitation happens inside the network. And effectively, when you consider what you're doing when you allow BYOD, your network is going to become effectively a semi-trusted network anyway. So you need to have a DMZ for your firewall, sorry, for your servers and corporate application. But what we need to appreciate here is that there are a lot of CVEs, common vulnerabilities and exposures. The firewalls and actually um, ordinary other defense doesn't deal with that. Uh, the fact that malware has also grown exponentially uh, and antivirus software on the inside of your network simply can't keep up with it. So what that priority allows us to do is uh, agentless deployment, it's usually deployed as an appliance or multiple appliances on a network. It will identify the threat, including malware, as it happens. What this then does is blocks, disables, or potentially redirects that, um, that device, uh, and this then prevents any infection from spreading, but it also prevents any unauthorized devices joining your network. So for example, you might authorize a user to bring his own device, but you may also want to make sure that it is only a device that you have accepted that is allowed to be used on the inside of your network. Um, Net Clarity provides a very easy, simple, uh, and agentless uh, solutions to this, and that's one of the reasons we like it. So it allows you to harden the network from the inside out, 
um, you can control the devices that join that network, um, and you can also protect your network from anything those devices bring in. Uh, very, very scalable. Small branch offices to large data centers. And that, I think, uh, brings us on to uh, what we're going to demo shortly, which is Citrix technology. And uh, I'll shortly be joined by Andy, who's going to be doing the demo for us. Um, Citrix's view of BYOD, we share um, any device, whether it's corporate or, or personal. And having a BYOD policy is something to be proud of, and you should feature it. Um, Citrix have been effectively virtualizing desktop applications for many years. But this has been developed recently to allow us to have a self-service app store um, and secure follow me data. Uh, this really fits into what we're talking about when we want to give people access to corporate applications and data from their own device. By virtualizing the application, we're effectively delivering it securely to that device. Now, with Citrix, they're their own case study. They've been uh, allowing people to use their own device for a number of years, positively encouraging it. And they have genuinely seen that this has lowered their costs, and this case study is available. It's given the workforce flexibility, and it's partly responsible for Citrix being one of the best places to work in the state. Uh, and what I think is interesting is the number of um, Macs that people are selecting to use. And actually, we've seen that Apple products certainly are popular when we start to offer um, in your own device. The three technologies we're going to be taking a look at then are um, these three from Citrix. Citrix Receiver is effectively the client which allows any device to be accessed from anywhere. Uh, Citrix Share File is your corporate and secure Dropbox. At least that's a, a, an easy way to look at it. And then um, this is quite new, and it is currently only released to partners, so it's pre-release, and we'll have to use um, Citrix's demo suite to show you this. But they are releasing secure mobile applications, referred to as at work. Um, these applications are managed and controlled by the Citrix receiver, secured by the Citrix receiver, and delivered to your desktop device. And as I say, this is currently in pre-release, so to some extent we're demoing um, software which we believe we will see sometime in February. A little bit ahead of the curve there. I hope you like it. I think on that note, I should hand over to my colleague Andy, who's going to just talk to you a little bit more about the Citrix technology, um, and we'll be able to do kind of talk you through the demo. Thanks very much, over to Andy. Okay, good morning. Um, let's do the um, so the things that we're going to look at, which um, are enabled by the latest version of Receiver um, and the Citrus Cloud Gateway at the back end, uh, provide a number of uh, very useful to have in a BYO environment uh, tools. So single sign-on um, to Windows Web and SaaS applications. I'll just discuss the, uh, the benefits of that as we go through. Um, the fact that there is a user self-service um, enterprise store where they can pick their applications, um, integrated file synchronization between devices, all enabled and secured through receiver, um, and then centralized management at the back end. So that um, if you have a user that leaves the organization, once you've um, disabled their account, removed them from, from the uh, cloud gateway, um, they will no longer be able to access the data um, and, and there's also some other technologies built in there, like poison pill, um, which will effectively uh, auto-wipe the devices uh, given a period of time off the network. So this, this diagram um, shows, on the left-hand side, Citrix Receiver. Um, and Citrix Receiver is available for any device, um, pretty much any device, certainly anything running Android, iOS, uh, Windows, Mac OS X, so on and so forth. Um, and when we talk about receiver on a mobile device, then it includes this mobile container, um, which is where the, the apps and the data go um, that are delivered through receiver. Um, there's a couple of components to make up the, the gateway. So there's an enterprise app store, um, and there's the, the cloud gateway app, app controller. <coughs> so looking at the, the right-hand side from the top down, 
Um, the types of applications that are delivered through this mechanism are the traditional Windows apps, so Windows uh, Zen app uh, or Zen desktop delivered applications. Um, then web and um, SaaS applications. So there's two things going on here. One is single sign-on to SaaS. So if we take something like Salesforce as an example, um, the Salesforce account will be provisioned by corporate IT and delivered to the user through receiver. So they log on to Salesforce using their receiver AD logon. Um, the, the key advantage to that is that if they leave the organization, they actually never knew what their password and account to Salesforce was in the first place. So they can't go directly to the SaaS application and gain access. You, you block them straight away. The other piece of technology that's in there for web uh, application delivery is um, there's a micro VPN capability built into Receiver through Cloud Gateway, which can give you access back into your organization for things like secure corporate intranet, um, SharePoint, dashboards, KPIs, that type of thing. So uh, without having to have uh, VPN technology in place, you can effectively get that straight on your mobile device um, through Receiver. Third one down uh, on the right hand side are the native mobile apps and uh, as Duncan said these are pre-released right now um, and we've only got them for iOS but um, we understand them to be very uh, very close behind with the Android versions as well. Um, and effectively what this is, uh, there, there's a, a couple of applications at the moment, um, one called At Work Mail, one called At Work Web and they are native iOS applications so you download them onto your device um, and they then run on the device but they are secured by receiver so any data that is passed through say the at work mail client um, and accessed through the at work mail client, client is only available to you whilst you have a valid account that's um, uh, authorized through receiver the final part is um, share file so this is the follow me data piece uh, and wherever you have receiver you will have the ability to have um, a data um, container uh, which links back through to share file so uh, we'll show you in a moment how by dropping a file into a share file container from say your you know corporate desktop um, you, you'll then get that fairly soon afterwards on your mobile device Just a quick slide on, on ShareFile. So ShareFile is a cloud-based Dropbox type solution. Um, the storage can be in Amazon. It can be um, on your own premise um, using ShareFile connectors. Um, but the control is all through Citrix Online ShareFile. Um, and effectively, it's, it's, a, it's a sync tool. So you'll sync files between your um, mobile devices of, of different types uh, and as soon as it's visible in one place it's visible all around. Um, there, there's a, a huge amount of uh, features in ShareFile which are not really the subject of, of this uh, presentation but it's, it's definitely worth looking at um, for uh, management of, of files especially um, you know email attachments that sort of thing. It's a much more efficient way of sending a link with a, a, a document to ShareFile that can then be downloaded rather than filling up email with um, big, uh, big attachments. Okay, so moving on to the demo, um, I'm going to switch screens in a minute and show you um, an iPad screen um, and um, we'll run through Citrix Receiver um, and then we will switch back to the Mac, we'll drop a file into ShareFile and hopefully see it pop up on the iPad. Um, so. I'll move across to that now. There we go, one second. Switch the mirroring on. So we're now looking at uh, a 
I should have done things like that. Um, so, 30 standard iPads, we can pop into the App Store, um, and here you'll find Citrix Receiver. Um, we've already downloaded it for, uh, for, for, for expediency, um, but effectively, yeah, you just pop on the App Store, download Receiver, um, and then once you've got Receiver, um, your IT can provide you with um, a, a configuration file which will set Receiver up for you, or you can configure it such that you just put your um, corporate email address in, and then it can also discover the um, uh, configuration it needs to find the cloud gateway in the back end. So I'm going to go into Receiver now. Um, and here we have uh, a blank receiver. Uh, and I've got uh, the bottom, an apps, and a docs tab, um, and the ability on the left-hand side to open that up um, and look down at the, um, the various types of application that have been made available to me. So uh, the top one gives me access to our traditional um, virtualized Windows apps, um, and I can pick which ones of those I want to be able to use, uh, and they pop across there onto my home page. Going back up, um, I mentioned intranet um, capability, so there's uh, some links that our IT have, have created back to um, various only internally accessible um, sites within our network. Um, we've then got uh, the enterprise SaaS, so let's have a look at Salesforce. I'll get one in. So if I now um, click on Outlook, that's going to go away and fire up um, a traditional Zen app, virtualized application session, and deliver it to this iPad. Um, and I'm sure this is stuff that most of you would have seen before. Um, but for the completeness of the demo, there it goes. So there's our, there's our copy of Outlook. Switch back to the home screen. Um, and then fire up Salesforce. Now what this is doing is it's authentic authenticating via Cloud Gateway and then delivering me straight into Salesforce. I've no idea what my um, user account for this application is, and this will work for any number of different um, SaaS applications. Pop back into the home screen, and I'm going to switch across to the Docs tab now. Um, in here, I've got um, a demo user Docs folder. You can have any number of, uh, of folders, um, and you can share folders from, from different people. Um, so in this particular case, we've got a, a shared folder from, from sales demo, which has got some different data in it, so you can see there's a PDF file in there. Um, and this is all coming from, from share file. Um, and at this point, I'm just going to switch back to the Mac. Um, and I'm going to drop a folder. Well, so here's my share file folder on my desktop. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the file here and I'm going to drop it in there. And then that file, when we switch back to the iPad, will appear in here. So there's our service cabinet entry. And when I tap the file, um, I can preview it on the device, um, I can send it on, copy the link, or I can download it to the device. Let's just preview that one. Um, there we go, very pertinent picture of a snowman. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch to um, an iPhone where I've got the uh, AppWork apps. Bringing that up, setting the screen mirroring, and here it comes. Okay, so there's a there's an iPhone. Um, hopefully the uh, the webinar will have caught up with that. Sometimes the screens are a bit slow. Um, so we've got here um, at, at the bottom left, we've got at work mail, 
and next to that at work web. So these are two of the native iOS applications uh, which we've downloaded through receivers. So if I go into receiver, um, we can see I've got a, a stack of apps from an enterprise store. Um, so in there we've got um, the same type of thing as you've seen on our, on our other store. So you've got Windows type applications, um, you've got the web and SaaS applications, um, and the mobile apps, at work web, at work mail are the ones we've, we've chosen to use right now. Um, and those are in my favorites. Um, and what happens when you, when you select these from the App Store is that um, they are downloaded then onto your iOS device. And the first time you use them, they are then authorized for installation through receiver. Um, from that point onwards, I go back to the home screen, they are then just sitting on your, your iDevice like any other app you've downloaded. However, if you try and open that application and you're not signed onto receiver, then you're not going to get access. So this is AppWork Mail. Um, as you can see, uh, it includes mail, calendar, and contacts. Um, and at the back end, this talks to um, Exchange um, ActiveSync to pick this data up. Um, so it's, it's everything that a mobile person needs, I think, um, or the, all the core things that a mobile person needs on a phone. Um, but all of the data that's stored in here is secured through receiver. So if we wanted to take this uh, user off the network, then they just won't get access to this. Going into the mail client there, um, just thought I'd show you previewing a document so you can see that it works like any other, um, like, like the native um, Apple application. Um, just opening up an attachment. So there we are, there's a, there's a PDF attachment that was sent by mail. So yeah, all the functions you need. Let's just pop back to calendaring, much the same sort of thing. Um, you know, it, it's your Outlook calendar replicated. Uh, that's interesting, it now wants me to log on to receive that. So now you're seeing uh, it forcing the, um, the log on. I must have reached a, uh, a timeout point. Um, and then we're going to go into contacts. I'll just get one contact set up in there, but you can just see the, uh, the basic premise of that. If I were to have um, an email that had a, a link in it, and I click the link to open it up, um, it will open that link in the um, in the app at work web, which is a which is a browser. Um, so again, it's it's um, it's keeping all of the data inside receiver. I think that's everything that I wanted to show. So um, we'll switch back to the presentation. All right, thanks, thanks Andy. Um, I hope you found that uh, interesting. Uh, certainly, from our point of view, it makes BYOD very simple uh, to deliver. Uh, and um, we've used this internally ourselves. A number of our customers are, are using it. Uh, all with very, very uh, successful um, results. So during this um, presentation, we, thought we had a look at a couple of different technologies. Uh, the Blue Coat um, Threat Pulse uh, as, a, uh, as a service technology. Um, also took a little look at the importance of protecting your users and your devices when they're on the inside of your network. So if there's anything that's you'd like to follow up with um, on either of those two, we, we probably would be best off doing um, some separate one-to-one uh, -one sessions. Um, on the Citrix side, as I say, we've been dealing with this technology uh, and it's in instrumental really in how we are delivering applications to our cloud services customers. Uh, and that goes back to one of the earlier slides, which um, was looking at the fact that when we work with you, uh, we are certainly able to provide products, but also able to install them, train, and uh, implement them for you. And indeed, with this 
BYOD solution, we're also able to offer that as a service where we are able to provide uh, a gateway to Citrix Receiver through to your corporate applications. So it's perfectly possible to deliver a BYOD solution without the need to invest in the infrastructure and technology that you need to deliver that. And you can, you can take that from us as a service, which uh, scales to, um, well, I don't know where it scales to, but it's something to scale to enterprise levels. Um, finally, I think uh, if there's anything that you'd like to, to follow up with us on, uh, our account managers will be in touch. Um, the documents that we referred to earlier will be available for download, and we'll send you some links through to those. Uh, I think that brings me on to um, any questions. So, uh, Carlos, are you, are you there? Have we had any questions? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, currently, nobody's posted any questions, but I, I'm sure they're about to. Um, so, the question box is uh, down on the taskbar in the, the bottom right of the uh, Citrix GoToWebinar um, taskbar. So please do feel free to, for Duncan or Andy to, to post any questions there, and we'd be only too happy to, to read those out. Um, so while you guys are, are thinking about that, so in, in, as Duncan mentioned, we, we've got further uh, webinars um, that are coming up. So we're on the 1st of February, we've got ones for Net Clarity. And just a, a quick correction, the uh, Blue Coat, um, seminar in London is actually on the 26th of February. Um, so you're very welcome to join us if you'd like to look more at those technologies. Um, right, so are there any questions? It doesn't look like equality, but I think we'll, we'll say thank you very much to everybody for joining. Um, if there is anything else that you require from us, I'm sure we'll be followed up with uh, your account manager shortly. Um, please feel free to get in touch with uh, any of your questions, uh, not only on this subject, but on anything that's relevant to it. Um, and again, I hope that's been useful for you. Thank you very much for joining.